Welcome back. We are making our third pack for our eventual Commander Legends Chaos Winston draft. Um, all of these cards are based off of random mana costs and card types as, as determined by MTG Gen for a real Commander Legends card, or for a real Commander Legends pack, but then interpreted by Urza's AI. So, let's get started. Pack 3, our pack is called Enraged Orox. A pet idea of mine that I wanted to see for a very long time. Not a full set, just a pack from a theoretical set of Enraged Orox. Forced Harvest is a 2-mana 3-1 green creature Orox. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a food token. This is a cool card. Okay, so it's a 2 mana 3 1. I like that. Every upkeep, you get a food token. That's cool. It's a predefined token. If you don't know food, it is a token that you can sacrifice to gain life. I think it's like you have to invest like 2 mana into it. I'm not entirely sure how much mana. I think you need to invest some mana into it to be able to crack it, and then you gain some life. So, interesting. They're also just artifacts. So, you know, you get to do things with them. Now that I think about it, do when cards generate predefined tokens, is it enough to say a food token and it is assumed to be an artifact, or does it need to be an artifact food token? Because food is technically a subtype of artifact. Yeah. Probably not. Either way, pigs and cattle belong together. So does thunder and a good knife. Karn, Goblin Chef. Okay, I do like the idea of Karn Goblin Chef. Obviously, it wouldn't be a one-to-one -one with the real Karn, uh, who is not a goblin nor a chef, but imagery is very good in my mind. Um, also, I just want, feel like I have to mention, Forest Harvest is such a weird name for this creature. Like, what does that mean? And I think it is like, it's a herd, right? This is not... Uh, oftentimes, when we think of a creature, we think of a creature, but creatures can be groups very often, right? So this is like a, a, a herd of aurochs, which you are harvesting every turn, one. Not the whole thing. It doesn't die. The herd does not gone. You just make a food token. This card's weird. Wow, it took me a while to get there, but yeah. All right. Blood Curdling Roar is a two mana white enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three plus three and has trample. It can deal excess damage to the player or planeswalker. It's attacking. That's correct minor reminder text. Good. Uh two mana for plus three plus three and trample sounds pretty good to me. Um I have discovered, especially with the most recent set coming out and having been playing it and drafting it, uh of, of real magic, I mean. I don't know power level. I'll see an aura and I'm like, is that good enough? I I don't know. And it makes me... It, I've, I've been re-evaluating just all of my opinions on this show of, of how to evaluate an AI card. I can't even evaluate a real card. Woo! So, yeah. No, I mean, it sounds great. Although, speaking of evaluation, it's worth repeating for this set. For... It's, again, it's not a full set. For this series... We are taking our first rolls for every card unless they fundamentally do not work. We are not re-rolling based on power level. So, with that said, only a true monarch can quell the fury of these cursed beasts. Mael the Anima. Cool. Forced Renown. Another forced card, but this time it's actually a non-creature spell. Forced Renown is an Eight mana? There was an eight mana? S wow. Sorry, nine even. Even worse. I want to know what spell this is supposed to be in, in Commander Legends. Alright. Forced Renowned is a nine mana red sorcery. Target creature gets plus eight plus eight until end of turn. Scry two. Wow, that card sucks. Again, we're leaving it in. This is draft. Anything goes. Often you throw out cards because they're bad. That's draft for you. It, it, it's fine. Wow. If this was like instant speed, maybe that'd be worth it. That's your finisher, right? Maybe you're willing to pay that. You, you get somebody through. I guess if you have like an unblockable thing, it's also potentially okay. But sorcery speed. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't read the text. When a vampire reaches the center of its kingdom, it consumes its past to feed its future. What's that called? Forced Renown. Yeah, okay, that checks out. Aurochs Regenerator is a 6-mana 3-3 three, three creature Aurochs. Whenever Aurochs' rate rege... Oh, Aurochs's. Oh, there you go. Aurochs' Regenerator attacks. It gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Okay, so it's a 6-mana 5-5, five, five, but only when attacking. Unless you have, like, multiple combat steps and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This card's bad. Wow. In his herd, he lives on mana and energy. Cool. Next. Oron Reef Exemplar is a 2-mana, 1-2 Orc Shaman. Whenever Oron Reef Exemplar attacks, create a 1-1 one, one blue and black spirit creature token with flying. Okay. For 2 mana, that's a generic and a blue, sacrifice a spirit, you gain 2 life. This card is rad! This card is great! Whenever it attacks, you make a 1-1, one, one, which is awesome, but also, it can use spirits. Like, the the fact that its its two abilities care about each other. Earth's AI is getting good. Honestly, Earth's AI? Mwah. You're coming up with cool designs. With faith in the spirits of oars and stars, our clan's influence grew. With each strike, we strengthen our ties to the sphere of avarice, strengthening ourselves. The mists of Kar. Jiraga Windriders is a 4-mana, 3-3, three, three black Aurochs. Ooh. It's just a 4-mana, 3-3, three, three, but it has the activated ability, generic and black. Target creature you control gets plus 2, plus 2 until in return. Okay, so it's it's like a fire-breathing effect, but it doesn't only buff yourself, it also gives toughness, and you can put it wherever you want. Cool. And you have to pay it two at a time. This card's good. I think this card's good. Yeah. I think it's a reasonable for four mana. The fact that you can buff other things is nice. The fact that you can buff itself is nice. Yeah, no, this is great. The more vengeance a spirit drinks, the greater its thirst for blood. We haven't seen anything in Rage yet. I was hoping to see some Enraged with a title like Enraged Aurochs. Not that Aurochs have any Enraged in their uh, core mechanics. I should say, if anyone doesn't know Aurochs, uh, I mean, the, 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 the word is a real thing. Like, you can go look up Aurochs in real life. But in Magic, every Aurochs that exists uh, is all about sort of herd mentality. Every Aurochs that exists has the ability, this gets, like, when this attacks, give it plus one, plus O, I think, for each other Aurochs that's attacking, which makes it basically useless unless you're playing Constructed, because you just won't have a lot of them. Uh, but the idea that you could play, you know, four copies of every Aurochs in the game... Uh, is interesting. There are, of course, only, like, four Aurochs ever been printed, though, so, you know. Uh, but for some reason, previously, when I tried making Aurochs, I would get Enraged, which Enrage is a mechanic meaning when this takes damage, an effect happens. And for some reason, it, it or say I just kept wanting to give me Aurochs with an Enraged effect, and I thought that was really cool, so I thought it made some Enraged Aurochs, and nope, not this time. Can never predict what Urza's AI is going to do. Trapped in Time is a 3-mana blue enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Classic, blue, locked down. I guess it's more of a, like, white sort of, like, pacifism effect, but blue has things like this too, right? Uh, also, like, the flavor, Trapped in Time, very blue. Ooh, actually, no, this card's great, actually. It's interesting that its triggered ability still exists. Like, what's the what's the flavor there? You're trapped in time, but you can still trigger? You just can't activate? Hmm, I don't know what that means. Don't look so worried. I just stopped time to make it stop hurting you. Urtai, Master Wizard. We haven't seen any legends yet. This is, of course... We are basing our stuff off of Commander Legends packs. Uh, they are 20-card packs. 
And they generally have some legends in them because you need them for the format. So I'm, 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 I'm waiting for our legends to show up. Scourge of the Sun is a 6-mana 5-4 creature Orox. It's green for green and tap. Target attacking or blocking creature gets plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. Interesting. If it's blocking, you can assign the blocker, then spend the green and tap, and then apply the buff. So you're getting, you can kind of double dip. If you're attacking, I guess you could give the plus three to something that is unblockable or like flash flying or something when you know you're not going to be able to get through. But you, I mean, then you're kind of not using your five four body, so not super exciting. But oh well, cool. Here lies another worthy. Another worthy warrior who once dared to stand against the Aurochs, Soya of the Southern Isles. Scourge of the Sun is an interesting name in that, like, you could see that as, like, a legendary creature being like, ah, they have this title that's been given to them, right? Or it's, like, the subtitle of a, of a legendary creature. But as just a creature, it does make you wonder, like, it's very easy just to, like, chalk it up to like ah the ai just came up with something silly don't don't think about it too much but like why is this scourge of the sun who calls it that is it like it, it can't just be a specific one either like again like it can't be a specific orox so it'd have to be like a variety of orox like a breed of them or like uh maybe a specific herd i guess you could do while you can have legendary groups less often is that really could raise to a legendary pedestal so it could be a specific group that could work too um yeah i don't know a lot to think about rust on arrival that sounds like the kind of card that would exist in like aether revolt or like like one of the ones that would take place on that plane which i can't think of right now where's the healy's from Kaladesh? Is that right? I think I'm right. Okay. Uh, where it's all like filigree race cars and stuff. And uh, yeah, rusting was like a theme dealing with vehicles and things. Rust on Arrival is a three mana blue instant. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. So a few things about this card. Um... It's an instant, but it says activate only as a sorcery. Now, activate refers to activated abilities, right? If they meant you may only cast, you, you can, can cast the spell only as a sorcery, that would be like how Flash is worded. Flash is worded like, you know, you may cast this spell anytime you could cast an instant. Cool. But this doesn't say you may cast this anytime you can cast a sorcery and can't cast it when it's an instant. So, pfft. Do we just say, yeah, cool, you can you can activate this only as a sorcery, uh, you can cast it only as a sorcery, that's what that means, do we just interpret it that way? Do we say, nope, it doesn't technically say that, or do we just completely re-roll the card? Not entirely sure. I, I do want them to be fundamentally broken if I re-roll them, but it does have, it has erroneous text, or not erroneous, but like, like irrelevant text is not a good enough reason to re-roll. But this is, like, misleading. Like, at the table, you could be like, wait, does this mean I can cast it or not? It doesn't say cast. It says activate. What do you think? Da, 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 da. And we want as few... Uh, we want it, We don't want them to be up for interpretation. We want them to may actually be able to come... Now, I do say, generally speaking, if you're going to play AI Magic, be open to communicating with the rest of the players and coming up with answers. It is fun to sort of interpret a card and go with it. But if they make sense out of the box and we don't need to have that argument, um, that's better, right? We don't want to have biases of a ruling happening in the middle of a game affect decisions. So I think I'm going to re-roll this. Before we do, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That is a big effect for three. Very strong. I would definitely be willing to have it in the game because this is AI magic and we are not doing a power level uh, balance. That's not, that's not what we're doing here. But yeah, we can acknowledge that three mana instant speed, unless it's sorcery, maybe, doesn't work. Or it works, it's just 
very strong. But also, rust on arrival, what does that mean? Like, I would think this would destroy something, not, like... Rust on arrival, to me, is, like, at the end of combat, destroy target creature if it attacked or something, do you know what I mean? Like, that, that feels... That feels like you got there and then blew up or something. Maybe before damage even, if it attacked. Like, yeah, destroy target attacking creature. Yeah. Get rid of your fancy gear, but leave your old scars at home. Clonagadin. Clonjadin. Clonjadin Silverbeard. That's a cool name. Now, let's get another shot at this. We haven't had any rerolls yet today. Grim Affliction is a three mana blue instant. Choose target creature. You may have target player sacrifice a creature. If you do, put two plus one plus one counters on Grim Affliction and you lose two life. Okay, interesting. So the plus one plus one counter is irrelevant. Now, once again, we could say, well, it's asking you to perform an illegal action. Is that okay? And I would say, I think it's actually fine that you can put a counter on a instant. You can, you know, exile a card and put counters on it while it's in exile if it is um, like a like a suspend card, for example. Why couldn't you put a counter on it? Counters, counters are just, they're an abstraction. So I'm going to say that's fine. And then you lose two life. So what is this? This is three mana instant speed. Target player sacrifices a creature you lose two life. Okay. That's kind of expensive for that effect, but it does get around, like, indestructible. You don't get to choose which creature target player removes, and it, it costs you two life, but hey, in limited, you take what removal you can get. When death comes, only ugliness remains. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if I should have kept that one or rerolled it. Or more accurately, I'm not sure if I should have rerolled the first one, right? Neither one was sort of a more broken than the other from a fundamental standpoint. Seething Baku is a three mana colorless artifact. Seething Baku enters the battlefield tapped. You may tap it to add black. Boring card, but not broken. Baku... Baku found no offense to such treachery. He attacked! <laughs> Great. Ooh, we got our first legendary. Hakim's Whelp. Okay, that's a appropriately legendary name. Weird, but sure, yeah. Hakim had a whelp. This is Hakim's Whelp. They're a specific person. Hakim's Whelp is a six mana, four, five, legendary creature Orox with reach. It also has Enrage. Holy crap, they did it! Whenever Hakeem's Whelp is dealt damage, target creature gains double strike until on a turn. Okay, I mean, that has potential right there. Wow. Wow. Now, what's interesting about combat, this is worth pointing out, is... First strike and double strike... Is, a, is an extra step that happens before normal damage. Which means, when you do damage, you don't, and then, and then it would gain double strike if it traded in combat or if something blocked it, but it wouldn't get to go back to first strike step and do the, du the, the double strike, right? Now, if this had like, you know, last strike, I guess not last, because last strike means you don't do normal combat damage, but whatever. Last strike's not real, I should probably specify. That's a that's from Unset, uh, but, you know, conceptually. If, this, if something had first strike and it hit this, this would gain double strike, but first strike step is already over, so it wouldn't get to use it that combat. You really have to hit it beforehand. And again, it gives it to whatever it wants, right? Um, it's not... You understand. Uh, it, 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 it says target creature gains double strike. But that's cool. And it does also encourage you to hit it multiple times. Sometimes in Rage, it's sort of like, it's either on or it's not, and it doesn't continue to stack. This, you can keep handing out death double strike to the rest of your team. This is a cool commander. This could make a really interesting commander. If there's more support for self-pain decks... Could be really cool. 
Six mana is a bit expensive, and of course, as a commander, they're green, they only are limited in color. I do think we're going to play around with adding a custom uh, sort of uh, like prismatic piper or um, uh, a faceless, whatever it's called, faceless lurker. Is that what it was? I think it's just called the faceless one. Um, sort of a custom stand-in for that element of commander draft to allow us to be a bit more flexible with our cards. But still, it is a limitation that it is only in green. Worth pointing out. But I like it. I like it a lot. The revered roar of Hakim brings newfound vigor to the mo mounts and their riders. The revered roar of Hakim brings newfound vigor to the mounts and their riders. So I don't know who Hakim is. Um, I do believe Hakim is from Real Magic, but that doesn't really have a lot of um, weight here. Names get thrown around all the time by Urza's AI, so, you know, like we saw with Karn's Goblin the other day, or earlier, I mean, other day. You know what I'm saying. But yeah, Hakim's Whelp. I don't know who Hakim is. They roar. I, pres I assume they're just another Auroch. They're like a different legendary Auroch. That would make narrative sense, but we'll probably never see them. Witch Hunt is a two-mana white enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if you gained four or more life this turn, put a 1-1 counter on target creature control. That is pretty cool. It's cheap enough that you could throw this down early in a game. Before you've already like spent your life gain stuff or or just the fact that you don't have to Waste a ton of mana and be like I'm gonna spend five mana to eventually get some plus one plus one counters But all that said it is still a very steep requirement And I have no idea if we're gonna see any life gain in this in this draft pool But interesting When humanity began to steal magical secrets the wit the hunt for witches became a holy crusade. What does this have to do with the Orox? <laughs> wow. That's an interesting take, though. Humanity began to steal magical secrets, and so we had to hunt witches. Yeah. Insurrection is a four-mana green instant. As an additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature. You gain two life. Well, that's not worth it. <laughs> that's That's awful. These aren't the types of creatures who get restless when they, there are no pigs to hunt. These aren't the type of creatures who get restless when there are no pigs to hunt. Sarian, Herdmaster of the Plow. That is interesting because it really does read like, 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 like a common saying, right? Like, this doesn't really make any sense when you think about it, but like, it, it just is an aphorism. Like, it's just a thing people say. Like, getting restless when there are no pigs to hunt. I don't know. It means something. Cool. Vraska's Contempt is a 2-mana 3-1 artifact creature beast. It has text that is cut off, which ends in divided as you choose. That, of course, was in, rem like, the brackets implying it's reminder text, so... I don't even know what it, like, it, was there a keyword up there? No idea. At the beginning of your upkeep, if enraged, sacrifice Vraska's Contempt. I think this card just fundamentally doesn't work. I'm really curious what what text got cut off, but even from that last line, I don't think it could possibly, I don't think it could possibly do, like, like what, what do you mean by if enraged? It doesn't mean anything. Although I think it'd be kind of cool to be like, this thing has enrage when it takes damage do this effect right which maybe that's what that is i don't know and then it says at the beginning of your upkeep if like it if it's enraged triggered this turn which is then shorthanded to if enraged or something yeah i could see that i could see them doing that but in this case we're re-rolling my path through Aurox runs smooth and untroubled free from her scars and silent threats my path runs through the villages and farms that once provided sustenance for the mere. It runs through the stables that once held such power. But I found a new power, the power to rage. And that's a... And the rest is cut off. 
wow, it was really, like, proud of that flavor text that it just ruined the rest of the card and then still got cut off. Spectral Butcher, good name, is a 2-mana two 2-1 two colorless artifact creature golem. It can tap, target player reveals their hand and discards all cards with that name. Activate only as a sorcery. There is no specified that name and therefore this card does not function. Yeah, it just doesn't function. I don't know what to say on that, that. In this endless waste, the monsters remain unsatisfied. We will provide for them. Magrav Hive Tyrant. Magrav? Like Krav Magrav? Um, Dead Spitter Mirror is a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two artifact creature mirror. Ooh, cool. It actually made a mirror. That's a mirror. For 3-mana, Dead Spitter Mirror gained haste until end of turn. For one mana, Dead Spitter Mirror gains flying until end of turn. This card, kind of cool. Like, you're not going to spend five mana for a 2-2 with haste, but you might spend one to jump this every once in a while. Jump being the shorthand for gaining flying, but only until end of turn. Uh, Yeah, it's nice. Honestly, like, colorless is just one of those things that you can really get away with a badly statted card just on the benefit of it being able to go in anyone's deck because when you're drafting you can just be like well i can always pick that up so yeah but uh, i don't even think it is badly i think it's perfectly fine it's not good like if you had a two mana two two with flying i think everyone would be like that's fine but yeah although it would actually be pretty strong i think in draft ooh, i would take a two mana two two with flying any day when the wings of its attackers remain on the carrion beetles what only the wings of its attackers remain on the carrion beetles of Wrath's Scavengers. I still don't know what that means. Even when I read it correctly, I did not figure out what that meant. Solemgar's Expertise is a 2-mana blue instant. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by target creature this turn. Cool! I like it. Uh, yeah. No, it's nice. Could you just kill that creature? Sure. But it's only 2-mana. It's kind of like... Yeah. Turn combat step into a bite, but not really. And it's not a full-on fog effect that prevents all damage, so your stuff is still hitting their stuff. Nice. I'm into it. The fight may be endless, but at least the murlocs aren't going to find you. Murlocs are from Warcraft. Hontru, Drow Jockey. Sure, why not? We got a lot of mixed stuff going on there. Citadel Guards is a 5-mana 2-2 two, two artifact creature construct. Citadel, Citadel Guards can't be blocked. Okay. Uh, for tap, put a charge counter on target artifact creature. Reminder text, it doesn't untap during your next untap step. So, let's talk about reminder text. Because Reminder Text can go wrong so often, and technically Reminder Text does not have technical, technically doesn't have rules, right? It is a reminder for something that you is part of the rules, but the text itself is allowed to be worded, you know, non-thoroughly, because it is only Reminder Text, technically speaking. Um, the ruling I'm making for this series is that if there's a made-up keyword, the reminder text takes effect. If there is a real keyword, the reminder text is ignored if it's wrong. If there is a no keyword and it just gives you reminder text for no reason, you ignore the reminder text. So, under those conditions, this card is not broken. Put a charge counter on target creature. It doesn't untap during your next untap step. That's not what a charge counter does. Even if we assume, oh, hey, they, they made up their own special thing, right? If they said put a stun counter on target artifact creature and then had a reminder text that said, like, this is what a stun counter means. Sure, you could argue that and you could say, even though charge counters exist in this context of versus AI, uh, we ignore that and we just have them have this effect. That might make sense, except for what does that mean? Does that mean that it's only when you put the charge... The charge counter is not doing anything. It's not a predefined counter at that point because 
it's referring to your next untapped step. And it's irrelevant. Uh, and charge counters are like a thing that already exists. Some things might actually show up that use charge counters. This is very possibly a relevant mechanic. We don't know because it's a chaos draft and we don't know if charge counters are being used in this, but could be an AI chaos draft, even more chaotic. It does not care how much noise the gong makes. Forge of Azmira is a land. Let's see if it did a good land. Tap add colorless. So good so far. Generic and tap. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Damage and effects that say destroy, don't destroy it. I think this card's fine. Good job, versus AI. You made a good land. It's not super interesting, but also it can go in anyone's deck. Like, it is appropriately a colorless land. I know that all lands technically are colorless. That's not my point. You know what I'm saying. I like it. Like, this doesn't feel super any one color. It does seem pretty good. But, eh? Tapping, it, it's, 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 like, it's like two mana makes something indestructible because it taps itself. It's pretty strong, but you only do it once per turn. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I think it's actually a pretty cool land. Good job, Rizzo AI. At a fork in the road, choose life. Nice. Forge of Azmira. I, I like that as a name for a land, too. There's something very, like... I guess you're forging armor or something. Azmira also sounds like... Because of the Azimar, like a sort of celestial being from D&D. Maybe from other things. Honestly, D&D steals a lot of stuff as far as names. So, I can't be 100% sure that it originates from there. Probably isn't, if I think about it. But because of that, I am associating Azmira with, like, divine. Like, this feels like an angel forge. I'm into it. Seems cool. Seems cool. Kal Sisma Dire Avenger. Ooh! It's our other legendary. Is a 3-mana, 2-2, two -two red legendary creature, Orox. For generic and red, creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. You know, that's pretty good. It's more expensive than fire breathing, but it hits your entire board. For only one extra mana? Ooh! Ooh, that's gonna be a scary one. Alright, okay. May I get the tusk, please? That's what it's for, isn't it? Wendell, Dire Avenger. Wait, you're both Dire Avengers? Is Dire Avengers just, like, a common title that... Okay. It makes you feel less legendary, Colossisma. I guess that's the real question here, is, like, is this just an Orox, right? I mentioned this in the last video, talking about a boar. But when an animal is, like, an anthro in magic, it's often still just that animal subtype right so that you can have things that buff all your cats and that includes leonin lion people and also house cats <laughs> you know like it, it's it's all over the place so we could have just a very important orox who's a legendary orox and we could also have like an orox who stood up on their hind hooves and, and is wielding a battle axe and the name Call Sisma just feels so much like a person name as opposed to like an animal name. Maybe that's silly, but that's where my head's at. I don't know. I'm curious. I'm really excited for the draw for this one. I guess I guess we'll I don't know. I I I'll have to see what I come up with. Myriad Hunt is a 3-mana red enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Oh, okay. I assume that's the creature attacking, not the Planeswalker you control. <laughs> then if it has 10 or more plus 1, plus 1 counters on it, sacrifice Myriad Hunt. This card is useless! What? Or is it Myriad Hunt? No, it, it would say this, right? Whenever a creature attacks your planeswalker control, 
Put a plus one plus one counter on it. Yeah, it buffs your opponent's stuff. Totally. Then, if it has ten or more... <laughs> this gets... This is 100% useful. It's not broken, though. Like, it, it functions. It stays in. <laughs> My friend Simon is in the chat saying, The fantasy series I'm listening to has a race of sentient horse-like creatures. Also, they can do magic. And are legal citizens. Heck yeah! That's what we're talking about. Let's go! Boom! It's my friend Simon. He's cool. Welcome in. Good to have you here. We're making cards. Without actually doing any work. It's not like real custom magic. <laughs> Perhaps aurochs are similar. Yeah, it could be. The f funny thing is, if an aurochs was a, like, p person... I feel like they would just be, like, Minotaur. Like, they would just use the Minotaur stat block, you know? Or not stat block, but, like, type line. Which is cool. I'm like, yeah. I love the way that magic is... is Doesn't mind going all over the place when it comes to their, like, creature type designs. Like, Minotaur has everything from, like, normal bull people to, like gazelle people like it do, they do not care they're like yep we're gonna throw them all into the same thing which is awesome it's so good then they also have jellyfish starfish fish and shark as four different ones but that's not my point either way gird your loins the hooves of 1000 steeds beat at your back Tharashk, Skyship Captain. I will say, I do love it when a card does a thing that on paper sounds useless. Because Magic is a game full of weird interactions. Just having the biggest guy and hitting your opponent in the face is not the only goal of the game, right? So when something goes, oh, that, that effectively does this. Well, it effectively does that in 90% of the situations, probably 99, but maybe you can make it relevant, right? So maybe you can do something with it. And that's always interesting. Not useful for a draft probably, but I don't know, maybe you have something that's like destroy a target creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. So you want to give them to your opponent or something like that's a thing. Plus one plus one counter hate exists, right? So Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Let's move on. Primal Storm is a 3-mana red instant. Creatures you control get plus 2, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. You may choose new targets for those creatures. Okay. So, I think this card doesn't work. But I want to talk about what I want this card to say. Creatures you control get plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. If they are blocking, you may choose to assign them... Like, to like change their blocks, right? Like, creatures don't have targets, but they do... They, they, they're assigned as a blocker. That's kind of like a target. That's interesting. On the other hand, we could also just say the last line does absolutely nothing and we just ignore it. That's also possible. It's a you may ability. You don't have to do it. The game's not forcing your hand to do something that you can't do. I think we leave this card. But it would be cool if you could like change your blocks partway through or something. I don't know if that would ever be useful. Because you're like, I assign blockers and then, you know... The, your opponent says, I pump this guy that you're blocking, so now it favorably, it, it doesn't doesn't trade anymore. Now it just kills your guy, and you're like, I'm going to switch blocking to somebody else. And then I don't die, and it's like, whoa! Like, that could be cool. That could be really cool. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. Or you could have someone else come in as reinforcement to block the guy. Yeah, no, I want that. I want that to exist. That seems cool. Every age of wrath, we sacrificed our children in vain. Elspeth. All right, that is the last of this pack of cards. This has been pack three, Enraged Aurochs. 
So now we need to decide which card we're going to draw. Which one becomes the draw? And, I mean, it's going to be one of the legendaries, right? It's either going to be Kyle Sisma, Dire Avenger, our legendary Orox, 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, can buff your entire field plus 1 plus 0. Oh. They really feel like a, like a, I kind of been picturing them as like a Minotaur that is leading an army, but I think it can't be. The more I think about it, the more I think it can't be a Minotaur like creature because that would just get the type line Minotaur. Maybe like an Orox Minotaur, that would be cool if the game was willing to do that, but they'd call it a Minotaur. We, we, we just have the precedent for Minotaurs being more than just bull people, and Orox are basically bulls, like it's so close. So I think it needs to just be like an Orox that's like on the ground. Now maybe it's still intelligent, maybe it's still like a person with a real brain, you know, but... It's it, I th I I think it's just like a beefy Orox, and it's gonna be cool. I'm into it. Uh, on the other hand, we also have a, another Orox. If I can find them real quick, what was the other one? What was the other one? Did I pass it already? I did pass it already. Oops. I kind of was thinking it couldn't possibly be the first one here. Okay, Hakim's Whelp is our other. Five mana, a lot more expensive. Four, five, legendary creature, Orox, Reach. But it actually has Enrage. And what it does is it gives double strike. Like, that's super cool. Which of these two am I going to draw? I I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I guess I guess we'll see. So I went with Call Sisma Dire Avenger. It was really fun to play into the, sort of this general theme without going full on you know, Minotaur. But... Yeah, I, I started by blocking out some, some rough ideas, and I could not figure it out. I was so confused. I basically just went really cartoony, really simple. You can see this long, oblong body with stick legs, and now I'm adding detail over top of that. And it worked really well. It got me right out of that art block situation and let me not focus on those small details and just do the broad strokes and now i'm adding in the fur and and what the legs would actually look like I, you can see i've given them this big cape i really like this idea of it being very like a like a general sash or something is like in my brain and so the, the this cape really sort of tied it all together they are still just an aurox they're not like a, like a person walking around and commanding people uh, i did think that they probably do have some kind of standing though like they are respected and they've got uh, some some accoutrement with these rings on their horns and, and and the cape itself i then added in this scar to add a little bit extra character because right now i just have an orox that i've dressed up what makes this specifically call sisma and so i gave them this battle scar across their face just to be a little bit something distinctive to grab onto I also gave them this tail. I don't really know if that's what their tail should look like, but I went and looked at the Orox through Magic's history, and one of them has this very distinctive tail, so I thought I'd just straight up just use that tail. Here I'm throwing in the colors with the red of the card. This is the red of the two cards. It seemed really obvious just to go with normal sort of brown tones. They're close enough to red, they're using red, but of course the cape itself is is a bright red not just this brown um it did seem a little bit bland though just a red cape so i wanted there to be some texture to it but i didn't have any good ideas about what it should be on there so i just sort of splatted in some random shapes uh which ended up weirdly looking kind of like an a so i don't know it's not intentional but if you want to interpret it that way yeah, go for it it works for me um, the horns, I decided to go for sort of a black color. I like black horns on uh, an Orox. I think it looks really nice. Um, and of course, it lets you then put in some shine when you get to that part in the coloring. I'm coloring in the rest of the shade, the highlights. I do think that just throwing in white highlights looks really good, makes things pop. I might be going a bit overboard here. Not really sure about it. Don't really feel great, but eh, what you gonna do? And so I just finished up by uh, once again using a multiply layer. I, browns and reds over top of everything just giving it more depth as a picture uh, i'm honestly really happy with how this picture came out i think calcisma seems really cool it seems a fitting tribute to me personally so that is my rendition of calcisma dire avenger
Hope to see you all in the next one.